Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Kevin's Corner. I'd like to start off with a simple disclaimer. Last week, I pointed out how President Trump made the entire NFL his slut daughters, players, owners, and commissioner alike. Now, I have to give myself credit here because nobody really knew where last week's mass national anthem protest by the NFL would lead. My prediction was that it would backfire massively and alienate the very customer base that the NFL needs to survive. And I was right. Only a small fraction of NFL players chose to still protest this week. If the protest was working, why back off of it? Trump wins. But do not mistake this as an endorsement of Donald Trump by me. I believe our president is the equivalent of Michael Scott and our country is Dunder Mifflin Scranton. For those of you who are TV illiterate, I'm saying that Trump is a buffoon. But what I'm really doing is condemning the left because they keep getting beat by this buffoon. Moving on. One of the more notable players that continued to protest this week was Michael Bennett. I was going to make him the focal point of my first installment of Kevin's Fucking Corner, but I am so glad that I waited. As you will recall, Bennett took to Twitter a few weeks ago with accusations of racism racial profiling, and excessive force by the Las Vegas Police Department. With no basis, in fact, only with feelings, the left-leaning media tripped over themselves to hail Bennett as a hero and condemn the Las Vegas Police Department as an example of the racial injustice that runs rampant throughout our government institutions. Even the NFL, the Seahawks, and Pete Carroll spoke out on Bennett's behalf. Last Friday, the Las Vegas Police Department released 193 videos that collectively told the entire story of what really happened that night and also proved that Bennett is a lying, race-baiting fraud who truly represents some of the most disgusting aspects of humanity. Here is what we now know. There were literally hundreds of black people present when this occurred. How is it racial profiling when police detain one out of several hundred black people, especially when that one guy runs from the police when they ask him to come out from behind the slot machine and he sprints out of the casino, over a wall, and down the strip. And those racist individual officers, you know, the two Hispanic and one black officer that obviously hate all black people, they not only handled the situation exactly how they should have, they went above and beyond. They explained to Bennett exactly why they pursued and detained him. They asked him for his ID, and Bennett had none. Who the hell goes out on the strip without ID? What is he, wearing a cocktail dress? No, he's wearing jeans and a giant flannel. But do the cops give him a hard time about this? No. Bennett says to Google him, and they do, and then release him. So not only did Bennett not get mistreated because of his race, he was granted special treatment because he was a millionaire. Then Bennett shakes the officer's hand, saying he understands everything. All of this can be seen on the website, outkickthecoverage.com, because my guy Clay Travis is the only person holding Bennett accountable. So NBC, CBS, Fox, and ESPN, who dedicated many, many hours to extolling the virtue of Bennett, have committed zero time to calling Bennett out for the piece of human garbage that he is. Bennett claims he wants to make the world a better place and eliminate injustice. Lie. Michael Bennett wants to sell his book, which comes out in 2018. So Bennett is a liar. Who cares? How about the next person who actually is mistreated by the police? Because now that we know Michael Bennett is full of shit, maybe that next person who makes a claim is full of shit too. Facts over feelings, you pussies. Just because racism exists doesn't mean that every interaction with the cops is racist. Just because sexual assault exists doesn't mean that Ezekiel Elliott sexually assaulted that girl. Michael Bennett has made the world less safe for the people who worship him. He has endangered young black men who will interact with the cops. Michael Bennett's eyes look like Hey Hey's from Moana. Fuck you, Michael Bennett. Now moving on to the Corman Power Rankings, better known as first three, next three, last three. Here we are after four weeks. I just careen my pants, holds it down, still with the number one spot. There's really not much more you can say. Domination for a fourth straight week. We're all waiting uh, for Mike to cool off, but so far he has not. At number two, and this will be a little bit controversial, but I'm keeping Fournette Cation in the number two spot, even though he lost this past week. 
look, this is fantasy football, not real football. So the rules that you would use for regular power rankings don't apply. And I'm not going to punish Fournette Cation for a, 100 points and a loss, okay? That's a game he should have won that he usually would win. I'm not going to punish him because the Kansas City Chiefs defense did the, the backdoor cover of all time. Or the, or the worst beat in the history of gambling, depending on how you look at it. At number three is Team Normie. So we do reward Team Normie for his efforts this week. He did take down the number two team and uh, is three and one and sits in our number three spot. Our next three, Brown bagging it. Bailey, uh, you may have dropped down a little bit uh, with, um, uh, with Team Normie's win. I looked at your week three matchup between the two of you, and since both of you scored below 70 points, I decided that it was a bad week for both of you and to kind of not really even use it. So based on that criteria, he moves ahead of you. At number five, controversial as it may be, the two and two Dolomite Pimp Squad. Why put him ahead of two three and one teams? Here's why. Because even though he's two and two, one loss is by 14 hundredths of a point. Okay, let me break that down to you. Point one four points, okay? Uh, that's pretty insane. That is the flukiest loss that you'll ever get. And one of his losses is also to our number two ranked team. The other thing is uh, that uh, most of his drafted team uh, is still intact, and he's added the Vikings' new number one wide receiver, Latavius Murray. Uh, my pain is his gain, so good for him. At number six, I'm putting Dezd and Confused. Riverboat Mike is dropping trade roofies in everyone's drinks and slipping in a few fingers. <laughs> Three and one. On the year, so he's got to be doing something right. Now, moving on to the worst of the worst, our bottom three. Cater to my needs. A blistering season high, season high of 82.32 points, plus back-to-back 80-point -back weeks moves Chris up two spots, from the basement up to the 12th floor, down to the 12th floor. That doesn't make sense. At number 13, Mr. Pitt Spiffy ST. After being number 13 last week and responding with 55 points, this is your best-case scenario, so you should be really happy that you're still number 13, Kyle. And at number 14, Knuckles. Guys, I'm wearing it. I'm owning it. It comes down to a lack of hope. When your top two picks go down and you're reduced to starting a, run, a New York Giants running back, it gets no worse than that. I'm in the basement at number 14 until I prove otherwise. Ladies and gentlemen, make sure that you tune in later this week for this week's episode of the Corman Fantasy Cast. Until next time, Ave, Atque, Vale from Kevin's fucking corner. See you around.